exactly the vision uh, behind the these project project where we are actually looking at the blend of uh, technical and scientific aspects of photography with imaginative art of creating and telling stories Uh, so basically, this is the program timeline that we are looking at. So as all of you know, and you must have gone through your uh, offer letter as well, uh, this uh, entire project is spread across eight weeks where in we are going to meet every uh, weekend. Uh, it's a virtual meetup. And uh, on 5th January, which is today, we are going to have an introduction and meet and greet session. On uh, 22nd January, we are going to have uh, a technical session on life maps. And uh, then we have uh, kept a, a, a special session, uh, an informal cohort meet, uh, which we have named as uh, Chai Chadar or Sardi. Uh, which is an informal cohort meet, not compulsory to join, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of music, so I'm sure nobody would want to miss it. And then we are having on 5th February, the better half uh, leading line uh, technical session. And after that, uh, we are going to have another uh, informal cohort meet which is called peeps ki baithak aur peeps ki baate and it's going to be our time where and we are going to know more each other on a personal level and on 12 february uh, another technical session followed by 19th and 26th and then uh, we have another uh, uh, wonderful session where in uh, it's another informal cohort meet khabu ki khoobsurti and uh, after that we are I'm going to have a closure on uh, 5th March, uh, wherein we are formally closing uh, the, the entire pro, uh, project. Today's uh, entire uh, outline of the program. Uh, so it's starting with the welcome address and giving you an outline about the project. Uh, we will have uh, our uh, founder of the STEERS team, Mr. Omar Hafiz, with us, who will take you through the entire STEERS. And then we have uh, Tabish who is going to do meet the peeps uh, uh, activity and the entire process she has been the she's the one who has been leading the project and then we have uh, elevator pitches with uh, me and tabish and then we have uh, the boss of the project uh, mr suhail meer with us who is going to do all the task and all the work here is uh, the boss of the project uh, mr suhail meer uh, mr suhail meer is uh, is is a resource person for our entire project He's the trainer, and uh, he's basically an attorney, a professional photographer, and a videographer for past two decades, as you can read. There is so much more to his credit. Uh, it's just that uh, we have not been able to put it all in one slide of all the wonderful work that he has been done, doing uh, across the places. We also have uh, with us uh, Mr. Paul. Uh, so Mr. Paul is a uh, director at URI Center for Nonviolence and Peace Studies, and he's also a professor of psychology. And uh, Paul has been program advisor with STEERS, and uh, he has been specially uh, helping and uh, assisting us and giving us support uh, in, in, in giving a final shape to this entire project. So here is the brain and the heart of our organization, Ms. Epsta. Uh, She's a writer, a school educator, curriculum developer, children content, and uh, a lot beyond what this slide can uh, talk about her. She's currently taking care of the communications part with the STEERS. And uh, to, to navigate the entire course of, of this project, uh, we have uh, a lovely group of facilitators with us. Uh, we have Tabish, we have Urva, we have Mehlika. Hello, it's wonderful to finally meet you all in person, like obviously virtually in person, but really we are so excited to begin with this program right now. So far, our communications have just been happening online through WhatsApp or through mails, phone calls. So it actually feels like we are all sitting under one roof right now. So we can't tell you how excited we are. And to make this journey even more enjoyable, we have our facilitators with us. So uh, we have Sabur over here. Sabur, Zahid, Sabur, would you like to unmute yourself and just, um, Sabur has been interacting with you all, so has Zahid. Talib is the one who's been helping us put this whole uh, program, the design aspect together. So Sabur, please unmute yourself and you could say something to start this yeah, program. Good evening, everyone. Hope you are all doing great. I welcome all of you to Peace Photography Project. I am Sabur and I have been working with STEER since 2017. I wish good luck to all of you. Thank you. 
All right. And I think Tabish and Urva, you both have been interacting so much with every participant here. I think you know them much, much more than what we are going to now learn about. So why don't you just introduce, say hello to everyone, Tabish and Urva. Hello guys, this is Urva Abed. Um, I, I have been interacting, uh, interacting with all of you. I think I've talked to most of the candidates here. So I think indeed the program will be interesting and stimulating one. All the best. Thank you. Hello everyone. Um, so I am I am the one you most of you have been talking to. Uh, my name is Tabish, and I'm really glad uh, to see all of these faces, you know, finally meeting. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, getting to know um, more about you, your work. And I'm, you know, it's definitely going to be a learning experience for everyone. So yeah, all the best to everyone. Thank you so much, Tabish, uh, uh, and thank you so much, Chairs Team, for uh, your kind introduction. Uh, so dear peeps, you'll be really glad and proud to know that you are the first cohort of our Peace Photography Project. And uh, here are the lovely faces uh, across uh, the, the India and maybe beyond that have come together uh, as the first cohort. So I really, really want you to give yourselves a round of applause for making it till here. Thank you so much for being part of uh, the entire project. And uh, I'm going to give a uh, thumbs up to each one of you for, for being in here. Uh, so these are the lovely faces that you can see on screen right now. Uh, uh, we'll come later to the, to, the, uh, to, the, to the descriptions of each one of you from the backgrounds that you are coming. And I think uh, that was the idea in the stairs that we have been really, uh, really particular about the intersectionality, about the diversion, about the diversity as well as inclusion. And we wanted to have uh, as, uh, as, as many uh, voices as possible for us. So thank you so much uh, for, for making it till here. Uh, now I'll uh, formally introduce uh, our founder, uh, Omar Hafiz, to all of you. Uh, each one of you to listen and listen patiently to each other, show respect and respond accordingly. Attend all the sessions and uh, Try to be on time in, uh, in, in all the workshops that we are going to connect. And uh, try to be sensitive to each other. Please be very particular about what information you are sharing uh, in the workshops, beyond the workshops, in the WhatsApp groups, and anywhere and everywhere. We would really appreciate a sensitive response from your side. And uh, now here is our, uh, our, our lovely uh, head of the organization, uh, Omar Hafiz. And uh, Omar Hafiz is one of its kind person who does not need any introduction. You name him and uh, every second person in the development sector will, uh, will, will, will end up telling you, oh, we know Omar Hafiz, who he is and the amazing work he has been doing. So uh, as you can see, he has done uh, his, his social change and social reforms uh, uh, from UNS, uh, University of Penn and Sylvia and master's in social work as well. He has done his uh, master's in uh, computer applications from uh, Islamic University of Science and Technology as well. And there are a number of things that you can read about him uh, uh, in the slide and beyond that. So uh, just being constrained of timing, I'll, I'll just simply hand it over to the Omar Hafiz. Thank you so much, everyone. Over to you, Omar. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, am I audible to everybody? Yes. Great. Yes. I can see you all. Um, but yes, guys, can you get on the yeah, video before we begin? I can see just a couple of participants on the video right now. Uh, just just for one second, we'll just quickly get on the video. Being on the video, it is more like feeling as if we are just sitting around the table watching each other. I can see a lot of faces that I already know. But thank you so much, Anas. Thank you so much, everybody. Just for the technical issues, I would say because we are operating from Kashmir, all of us, like I have also landed to Kashmir some days back and, you know, Kashmir and internet, they, this is a very contrasting relationship. Uh, so, so sometimes you'll hear us loud, but sometimes we'll be muted, like with no reason, right? We don't have any logic for that. But yes, I mean, we are so happy to have you. Um, and honestly saying this thing, there has been a lot of hard work. I think all the hard work that I have not put together in my exams, we have put together in shortlisting this cohort. Uh, amazing work. And, and the best part about this whole thing is the diversity inclusion that we have actually focused on. Um, I see Jivika, I see uh, 
I see Mahak, I see Amir, I see a lot of, I, I see in fact OS, Ram, a lot of people. But just because we are, uh, you know, here, we are also not letting you unmute yourself for some time. There is a reason because there is this, this whole thing is all about you. And just to tell you, when you're here with this mindset, you know, are we going to learn? But honestly, we are actually going into this together, right? You know, we are going to learn from the diversity, this inclusion together. So if you are not learning, so maybe we have to introspect. Is there something missing from my end? Am I adding value to this cohort? Am I being the right form of peep, you know, in the whole process? What are my learnings that I'm going to take away in the process, right? Uh, <clears throat> so a lot of things, uh, but uh, uh, first thing, I think we have some Zoom user. We don't know the name. If you could rename yourself so that we get an idea you're also not on the video so and everybody can you get on the video so that we see all the bright faces that we've been promoting and circulating on social media in fact you guys will have a lot of follower base over the course of time that will generate through the learnings that we'll have over the course of time uh, i'll be sharing slides this is just the ritual i don't use slides honestly uh, you know in my in my sessions but but because i you know we have time constraint we are actually trying to be on time, not waste anybody's time. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, my presentation to quicken up the process and not to bore you at the same time. But yes, I mean, if you get bored, just look at my face for some time, it will entertain me. It is very funny that way. And I'm wearing red today, just to kind of appear a bit uh, clear to all of you. So yes, uh, <clears throat> just to begin, uh, uh, is is English comfortable with everybody? In fact, there is no language barrier. We can swing between English and Hindi because most of us know. Is there anyone who does not understand Hindi? Yes, I don't know. You... Uh, so who, who is that? Who is that? Akalma. No problem. We'll try to have major portion of our, our conversations in uh, English only. Okay. Uh, so, so basically, as as you uh, heard in the beginning, uh, steers uh, started as a as a campaign. Uh, you know, in the beginning into 2017, uh, where the whole idea was to create uh, safe spaces for women and third gender. Uh, because I come from Kashmir, so I have always realized that there has been a different approach towards third gender community. Uh, so this this all started by creating empathy towards them and also uh, creating a space where they can at least share the story because when we share stories we build up empathy this is more like a bridge for building that empathy towards each other right so it actually got a great response and at that point of time i had no idea of uh, you know how to go about it but you know and also like in any foundational work you need a great team without without a good team and quality team who understand work and who actually uh, you know are living with the idea and the emotion that you carry with yourself. Uh, that is how I met Anas, how I met Ipsta, how I met Sahel Sabu or the course of and, and all the other other brilliant people that we have in team, Tabish, Aurua, uh, Subur, Anas, uh, Subur, uh, Zahid and other people. We do have other people as well. The best part is we have created a structure where we have people working with us from different parts of globe. Not too many, but just quality people. We, we are very greedy to have quality people with us. So at this point of time, we actually work on four dimensions. One is education, other one is peace. Uh, then we work with youth and then we work with communities. Uh, so in these four, four areas, our, our major work is around conflict transformation. Uh, so we believe this theory uh, that there is no place in the world without conflict and uh, absence of conflict doesn't mean peace. So we actually uh, work on conflict transformation um, uh, uh, through through education as a medium we actually have these core programs our first core program is conflict transformation merge program then we have regional dialogue you can see we have safe spaces for children we have emergency response program uh, then we have uh, uh, community library i'll just quickly uh, take you through all the programs one by one starting uh, from conflict transformers program so this program uh, is, is one uh, of the programs that actually we have set on ground uh, lately as an organization that works in conflict regions. So in this uh, conflict transformers program, we actually with a four tire model, uh, four layers of our life, which are like, it takes a lot of time 
to explore ourselves like you know the first first layer of this program is self exploration second stage of this program is uh, self expression uh, self acceptance then third one is self expression then we have leadership and then we have conflict transformation so right now we have started and this intervention in 10 districts of kashmir a lot of people don't know about kashmir except for the dal pahalgam gulmarg but then these are districts i mean and whenever you plan to visit kashmir of course now you will have more friends in kashmir we have participants from kashmir and also like if people want to visit maharashtra kerala and other places you guys are going to make a lot of friends from this cohort uh we we did uh, a lot of uh, emergency response work this year like during covid times we worked across um, uh, different districts in jammu kashmir and ladakh uh, then we have uh, driven this uh, campaign that we spoke about in the past we have a regional dialogue program which is more about exchanging stories uh, in different regions which are divided politically so what we do with with these uh, in this program is we actually uh, share stories of one region with other region these stories are hyper local non political uh, purely humanitarian stories the idea between uh, be- behind this uh, regional dialogue program is uh, that we are actually trying to build empathy and mitigate the divide that lies between these regions so we are particularly talking about jammu kashmir and ladakh in this case we recently started this intervention in northeast as well we do have uh, you know a person uh, one one of our peep from northeast as well i, I mean i think a couple of them uh, so we have this program safe spaces where uh, this year because a lot of students uh, adolescents who were actually stuck at home uh, could not uh, actually focus on the mental health because many things were happening for them in life i mean for kashmir it actually is a different story so we started this virtual competitive uh, program where we, we which we call as physical literacy league where we were actually teaching them sports but at the same time capacitating them uh, over the course of time it was a great exercise to mitigate the mental health uh, stress that they were facing by by being indoors for for the whole period then we have a uh, sustainable community play spaces right you know if you look at your childhood i mean i'm particularly talking about uh, peripheries or or uh, not not about met- metro cities uh, we had the structure that we used to call angan structure right you know the mohalla system uh, where in the childhood we used to play like every kid used to play with each other but the best part about that childhood play was nobody was aware about the uh, uh, ab- about the uh, privilege that that uh, a child came from so there was no concept of being privileged or being underprivileged but because over the the pe- period of years everything got colonized you know we started building huge houses that mohalla structure that angan structure got uh, you know away from our communities so sustainable community spaces creates a sm- small park for children which actually targets around 100 children from particular community and it actually uh, does a lot of play around cognitive development men, you know decision making uh, critical thinking like like things that actually uh, are very very important while a child is going so we have uh, community libraries uh, i i should tell you that in kashmir we have started uh, i mean we are in the process of establishing first floating library uh within the dal all the people from kashmir know where it is located but yes i mean uh because we believe that most of you who are from different parts of india will visit kashmir uh, and you will spot something in you know in the heart of dal lake when you are actually taking good pictures you will definitely like to be there uh peace photography so when we say putting peace phot- photography in safe spaces the idea is you know what you take away and how you serve your communities are you actually disseminating right form of information because you have a power and a power with you where you circulate lot of pictures uh, are those pictures telling right form of stories are these pictures focusing on the aesthetic value of your surroundings are these stories uh, do, do these pictures actually telling right form of stories and bringing differences in the subject that you are carrying in that a uh, picture this this is why we have put this in safe spaces we have theater in peace building uh, in theater in peace building we are actually targeting the uh, 
uh, audience which actually are interested in theater, but we at the same time focus on uh, the elements that 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 uh, are primarily about peace and conflict transformation. Then we have Pen Pal project. This year, as I said, we started our uh, intervention in Northeast as well. What we are doing is we have created a buddy structure where we have a batch of students from Kashmir uh, and a batch of students from Northeastern states. There, there is a there is a uh, uh, engagement process where they write letters to each other. They engage on virtual spaces. They they uh, acquaint each other, you know, about the diversity of the culture that they come from. But one common thing that these two places have is the conflict that that uh, we see in northeast and uh, you know uh, Kashmir. Uh, I'm I'm concluding my presentation uh, by welcoming you all, and I know we have bored you with a lot of bombard. <laughs> presentations there is a lot of fun uh, honestly over the course of time and i see a lot of mischievous faces so we are going to extract some fun from those uh, mischievous faces and expressions that we have but before we go ahead i think let us just uh, compose and let's prepare ourselves for the upcoming session so we'll all uh, i'll be playing something uh, you guys will focus on one part of it and just whenever you feel close your eyes, this will just uh, get you uh, going into the program, wherever you are, uh, with, you know, whosoever is right next to you, just, just focus on what I'm playing right now. Don't focus on it in a generic form, focus on one thing, because this is going to be a musical kiosk that I'm playing right now. And whenever you feel in next 30 seconds, close your eyes, try to focus on one thing. Once you get back, we are going to hear from all of you what you were focusing on. So everybody uh, be with me for next three minutes and then we'll get started with the exact uh, program uh, with, with Tabish. Thank you. 
let's get back i know you don't want to come back from that zone can you all hear me don't say anything you can just wave your hand how are you feeling i'll take your names one by one right jeevika how are you feeling your your audio is muted jeevika you know relaxed very relaxed as the music wants us to be hmm vipin yeah like so i was uh, same as jeevika i was feeling very relaxed and i was i was into the into that music like i was feeling like i was moving with the music like a river or a rivulet or yeah deepak yeah i i i was also immersed in the music uh, and um, i think it was a great soothing experience i don't know why you called the musical chaos it was very soothing and uh, the, the the natural uh, sounds and the music was perfectly in sync uh, yeah i in fact i opened my eyes fearing that i'll go to sleep thank you ayushi yeah i'm feeling in tune like i'm very tuned like a music instrument so yeah rapti yeah i'm so sorry uh, my internet is a bit uh, bad i i'll be very honest as i was feeling a bit sleepy because i'm really tired from the day i had but yeah it was it was relaxing but in a way that i was feeling a bit sleepy So it was difficult for me to focus on one sound. Lakshmi. First of all, hello everyone. Ah, uh, the music was really pleasant to me, and it like it took me to a place of peace and calmness and flowers, mainly flowers. Yeah, it was really peaceful to me. Mahak. yeah it was very relaxing and kind of freedom like the sound of birds i can only relate to freedom and peace thank you so much <clears throat> I'm, i'm not taking all of you for now but uh, i think over the course of time you will get to know more and talk more this is your first phase of exploration you know what was calming you down was not the music it was your focus on one thing in that whole music so you know the focus part in life is always calming it is peaceful and over the course of time when we are going to get deeper into what we offer and what we collectively do in this space is actually going to be more about focus and that focus will get us deeper into what we are going to achieve together in that in this whole cohort i'm going to invite tabish but just because we made you unmute i think we can just welcome tabish together and she is going to now start having you all and we'll going we are going to listen from everyone and know more about you and we are so excited because what we have kept chaotic and what we have been curious for the whole time is like what is your life who you are and we surely are going to tell you more about us as well over the course of time over to you tabish thank you so much for being patient guys Uh, hi again everyone uh, what a wonderful evening uh, it's really of such a like, gush of emotions uh, because uh, the moment we started ideating i like the ideation of this program and you know we have been working here as a team on this and to a point when we finally are having the first cohort it's such an amazing and overwhelming feeling for us and thank you so much for completing um, this process for us and this and we are very sure that this is going to be an amazing journey for everyone and we are, we want you to be as excited about this project as we are so um 
like we you should be really happy that you know you're part of this diverse cohort like people are coming from different states different identities different ways of expression expertise you know area of interest and everything so as part like you're now officially part of this family and as a tradition goes that you know you have to acquaint uh, yourself so as part of this we want everyone like all of you to introduce yourself like who you are what your experiences are because at stairs we always believe in validating and acknowledging your experiences whatever whatever you feel whatever you think so this this is going to be a great opportunity for everyone all of us to you know get to know about each other so we'll be start we'll be um we have a ppt ready and all of the participants not participants actually uh this is there is a change of nomenclature here you are not members you're not participants you're basically very cool peeps you're the peace photographers so we're going to call you as peeps so as peeps we're going to you know have a a mini icebreaker session where you introduce yourself but there is a word of caution that you do not introduce yourself uh, like all the information some of the information about you is already on the ppt but you have to introduce yourself as something very different like you have to tell something interesting about you something that you would want us to remember you as okay so i'm pretty sure like this is the part of um, this is your time this is your program so you are getting uh, 30 seconds so introduce yourself yourself um, yeah so do we have the ppt we will go like there is no logic will definitely will go alphabetically so we'll have be having the first peep so this is the peep you're the peace photographers the cool um members of this cohort so <laughs> yeah so we have akhtar khan uh, akhtar khan is from delhi and we know that he has done his ba Uh, and is currently in his third year so akhtar are you there yes yes i'm there yeah tell us something which is not um, mentioned in the ppt okay so my name is akhtar khan so you can uh, remember me by sun star actually akhtar means is shining star so you can remember me always star or sun star <laughs> thank you anything else um uh not yet actually i will tell you later okay, take your time take your time you have all the time throughout this program so second peep yeah we have amir khan he is also from delhi do we have amir khan yes hello everyone hi yeah my name is amir and you can remember me i always say jaddi jakas boy <laughs> because i always like to be happy and uh, in enjoying mood so you can remember me as a jakas boy yeah we can already feel how you radiating with positive vibes thank you so much amit thank you we have ayushi ayushi is also from delhi yeah uh, i am basically from panipat but yeah currently staying there okay basically so yeah so i am a very illogically logical person uh, a very conscious non conformist uh, you can okay. remember me yeah and i'm a very very curious person yeah that's how i'd like to be known yeah down to twister but yeah we'll remember you like that <laughs> yeah thank you ayushi um we have christina christina is from meghalaya hello everyone am i audible yeah you see what go ahead please um hello everyone i am ira and how do you remember i don't really know uh you can remember me as someone who likes art and very i really like art and into various types of art and Oh. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Christina. We have Deepak Kamde Sab. Uh, hi, my name is Deepak. <clears throat> I have studied a lot to an extent that it's almost embarrassing. Um, yeah, I 
because of work or life or whatever you might call it i i have not peeped into my uh, artistic side and i am looking at this up this is an opportunity to uh, have a little bit of insight into that side of me uh, i don't know what you call me you can call me whatever <laughs> yeah i am excited uh, thank you thank you Uh, next we have Farzana and she's from Kashmir. Hello everyone, I'm Farzana. I'm from Kashmir. Sorry, I have breathing issues. I won't be able to talk. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, do you want to write something in the chat box? No, no compulsions, but you I'm can sure. also type something. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Sure. Cool. Cool. Oh, we have Jivika. Yeah. So. Uh, the region seems missing, so I'll just. Uh, uh, I, I I I'm someone who's born in Kashmir, brought up in Delhi, and uh, and worked pretty much uh, through rest of India. Uh, currently living in Himachal. I think I'll stop here for now. Yeah, now you now we know why the region is missing because you've been to different places, born yeah. up here, brought up there. So yeah, you're like omnipresent, Jivika. So thank you so much, Vika. Next we have Lakshmi. First of all, hello everyone. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay. First of all, hello everyone. And uh, I consider myself as a development practitioner and a feminist. The gender-related issues are the core field in which I always associated myself. Okay. So you all can like uh, there are other. aspects related to me like photography is one of them traveling and loving flowers is another level is another thing uh, related with me and i think that's it yeah. thank you yeah i think we're going to share common love for flowers here um next we have mehak jahan she's also from kashmir yeah hello everyone so as of now you all can remember me as mehak and let's see where this opportunity takes us and see how you can, all can remember me thank you thank you so much uh, mehak mehak is very curious <laughs> we have mehru mushtaq she is also from kashmir okay so hi everybody i am mehru band i'm from kashmir so i think uh, i'm good at analyzing things like uh, both creatively as well as critically so to me both are important to arrive on an ideal solution and i am a very curious person like i want to know things um that's it so we have curious mehru here uh-huh. thank you yeah thank you so much next we have uh, mohammed mustafa and he's from afghanistan mohammed mustafa um is he in the meeting he had joined i think he he dropped off maybe he has internet issues i tried to join oh. multiple things oh okay okay let's put his uh, introduction for hold on for some time we have uvais khan and he is also from kashmir yes yes i am uvais okay. and i want to tell something about me that i fell in love with photography because i used to forget me so i used to take I edit some part of art days and then I got interested in photography. Great, that's a great way of taking notes and remembering things. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wes. Next, we have Prapti Bhatia, and she's also from Delhi. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, it's pronounced Prapti. Uh, Prapti. My bad. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. Um, 
Uh, I'm from Delhi right now, studying in Bangalore, but doing a research in Madhya Pradesh as part of my college. So I'm in Rajput, this uh, Parwani district in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, one thing that you can remember me from that I'm an old soul. I love old infrastructure. I love poetry. I love writing letters. I love everything old. So I don't know why I'm born in this generation. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm very slow at things. I like to travel slow. I like to do things very slowly. So I mean, that's something. Uh, I'm as like a lot of people have said they're very curious. I'm just opposite of that. I feel like things be. Uh, like uh, just uh, one Punjabi uh, phrase that we use, Sanuki. So uh, I don't know. I feel ki nahi karna mujhe kisi bhi cheez se engage. So yeah, that's about me. Yeah, we have a super energetic, energetic prapti, vintage prapti here. <laughs> yeah. So next we have uh, Priyanka Tomar. She is from. She's also from Madhya Pradesh. Uh, Priyanka, can you hear me? She got dropped oh. off just now. Is, is Priyanka there? Yes, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. So Priyanka, please change the name of your uh, screen uh, from yeah, Zoom. Actually, user. Yes, yes, I tried doing it, but I was unable to change. I'll do it later. It's fine, no, it's no. fine. So Priyanka, tell us something about yourself, interesting facts about yourself. Oh, I think we can move to the other peep till we have Priyanka back. Yeah, we have Ramu. And he's from Delhi. Hello to everyone. And my name is Ramu. And my friend know me by Ram. And most of them call me Awara. Because I don't stay at one place. Because I love to explore the things. And visit new places. So you can know me by Awara. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was, you're a very, you seem to be a very jolly person. Um, thank you. Uh, next, we have Tanjit. Uh, I don't know. You can just tell us what you, how you pronounce your name as. I think we have Priyanka back. She has raised her hand. Can I speak now? Yeah, sure, sure, Priyanka. Go ahead. Uh, myself, Priyanka, and I'm from Madhya Pradesh, Gwalior. And uh, right now, I'm in a college and this is my first year and uh, so basically I'm a very active person I love to do everything like I love to dance mm -hmm. and I'm very adventurous like I've been uh, to Kilimanjaro it is the <coughs> uh, it comes on, uh, in the top five trekking uh, point and basically uh, I'm very adventurous and active person and I, and I, I love photography as well yeah you're doing wonderful things at such a you know in, at in such an early age we wish you all the best Priyanka. um thank you next we have and you can, maybe you can remember me that uh maybe i'm the youngest in the group maybe i know i don't know maybe yes i think all, you man. are we are, yeah. all in Priyanka, we are all 18 here starting <laughs> from <laughs> Um, do we have Ranjit Sagar? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I am Ranjit. Hello, everyone. And you guys can remember me from my height. I'm six foot two. And someone who loves to be in rural areas and villages. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sadly, we won't be able to see how short <laughs> we are. Ranjit, the tallest in the Next, we have Rupal. She is from Odisha. Hmm. 
Do we have Rupal? I think Tabish Rupal has some issues here texting me. But we have Mustafa oh. back. We have Mustafa back. Oh, so Muhammad Mustafa, are you here? Uh, can you tell us something interesting about you? Just so we know you. We get to know you. I think he got disconnected again. Yeah, I think they have some uh, internet issues over in Kabul. Yeah. Please go ahead. No. So next we have Salma Nazar. She is from Kerala. And a doctor to be. Yes, hi everyone. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yeah, myself Salma Nazar. And uh, as it's written, I'm a medical student final year. So I'm like busy with exams and everything. Um, I would like to be known as a traveler and learner. That's much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm, we have Shankar Singham and he's from Pune. I think he hasn't joined. Oh, okay. Um, okay, then we have next peep. Uh, Shemail. <coughs> Shemail is from Kashmir. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Shmail Jan, and uh, you can remember me. Uh, by a uh, smile because it relates to my name and I'm always smiling and uh, you can also remember me as I'm a very talkative person. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. We, we would love to hear from you. Smile. Um, next we have Suheb Muzaffar. He is from Kashmir. Uh, yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. So, I would like to share. I have something common with Ranjit, and that's my eye. So, I have multiple interests. Uh, you can say I love painting, I love sketch, I love cricket very much, and photography. Some people call me that you are best at it. So, I love adventure also. Out okay, nature, my, my, my friendly nature, your friendly focus is to allow nature, and my hobby is sometimes I love bird watching. Also. You have the characteristics, all cats write an autobiography. And then, thank you so much, Sahib. Next, we have Suraj Narayan, he's also from Delhi. <laughs> Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Suraj and you can all remember me as the boring guy because I don't interact much with most of the people, so that's all. Yeah, you forgot to mention that you're a great web designer. Artist also. He's been yeah, he's been amazing. Yeah, so next we have uh, Vijaya Lakshmi. She's from Delhi. Uh, hello, Vijay Lakshmi. Are you there with us? Yes, she is she's with us. I think she has some issues. Okay. Uh, we'll pass. <clears throat> so the last but one we have is uh, Vikas and he is from Haryana. Because. Hello, everyone. Amal. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Hello. Yes, please. Oh, yes, okay, please okay. Go ahead. So, hello, everyone. Okay, okay, okay. So, my name is Vikas. As you can see, there is written that I'm from Haryana. And uh, I have done master's in sociology from Ambedkar University, Delhi. 
and since his i ruled i have been watching movies and i found this jammu kashmir is a very like in a good space india switzerland that's what i have been hearing since my childhood and it's my golden opportunity that i'm here having interaction with you people from that part of area and i'm glad to see you in physical if time permits to me so uh, and i think me, yeah are you able to hear him or is it just my network because i don't trust my network no i think vikas has some issues no ah, okay we are all 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 excited yeah, this, to know about yeah. aryan and different places as well that's what this program is all about we're going to culturally share a lot of ideas and a lot of things you know that are common and uncommon between us so that's what you know this project is all about thank you vikas and the last peep for the day like for the cohort we have a uh, vipin and he is also from delhi yeah hi everyone vipin here so the meaning of my name basically is forest and this is what i love the most forest being in the forest going to forest besides that i also love walking and uh, exploring of peat places yeah this is all about thank you uh, vipin the one man <laughs> the one we stands for jungle in hindi yeah so with vipin we do we have anyone who hasn't introduced um self or herself or i think we're done if there is anyone who has anything to has anything to add or did not tell something interesting about themselves you have this one last chance to unmute and tell something exciting about us otherwise we'll move to some other new activity because we respect everybody's time here yeah i want to say <laughs> i uh, yeah it was great to see amir here because he is uh, already my friend and i just uh, saw him here so it was a uh, great meeting him here hello amir hello bhai nice to see you here bhai same here yeah. <laughs> jungle boy <laughs> see this is what peace photography was all about <laughs> we were already making friends and meeting old friends so i'll just uh, share another similar thing here Uh, Ayushi and I are friends, and we work together. Just that she had taken a break from. I mean, we had taken a break, and it so happened that we signed up for the same thing, and we did not, you know, get a chance to let each other know. And then finally, we are like, we are occupied with this one, and it happens <laughs> to be the same one. So yeah. Oh, <laughs> great! See what a coincidence. So guys, I think we are done with the. Uh, you know brief uh, ice breaking sessions that we had and i'm sure that all of you like it will take time for every for all of us to get to know each other but yeah for starters this was it uh, i think i'll uh, i think i'll ask uh, anas sahab to take it uh, from here because we're going to have another very fun kind of activity that's going to be very brief and pervasive session wherein we all are going to share some good you know happy moments um with each other so anas can you go ahead yeah thank you so much sabesh and uh, thank you so much everyone uh, i think as i have already mentioned in the chat poets dancers uh youth who to the piece of benjamin We have everyone on board. We're super excited to see all of you. And uh, Anas, complete... Anas, you're... Anas, you are being melodious. I think you can just put your video off. Yeah, you are being in rhythm. Oh, right oh, now. I'm sorry. You don't want them to get into any musical chaos because of weak internet. Can you hear me now? Can you yes. hear me now? Now it is better. Now it is better. Oh. Okay. Uh. So uh, as we all already had your introductions, and uh, we are really looking forward to know you more and uh, know you in depth as well. So uh, we are gonna uh, uh, follow an activity wherein we are uh, sending you to the breakout rooms, mm -hmm. and uh, you all are gonna uh, be in pairs, and uh, we are gonna give you two minutes, and 
in those two minutes, what we want to know from you is uh, the prompt for the conversation is uh, you 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 got to share one secret with your partner that uh, no one knows about you. And uh, another prompt for the conversation is uh, you need to talk to your partner about one thing that made you happy in, in past one year. Uh, so I'll repeat the prompts. Uh, the prompt is that uh, you need to share one secret with your partner and uh, you need to share with your partner about one thing that made you happy in past one year. So these are the two prompts uh, for, for, for your conversation and you will have two minutes. You can uh, start with your name or anything you would want to have your conversation with. And uh, I'll request IFSTA to please uh, start sending everyone in the breakout rooms so that they can begin. Yeah. Please don't mm -hmm. freak okay. out because breakout rooms, they're going to be a fun activity wherein you get to know about your random partner. So just please enjoy this time and try to make you know friends and acquaintances while you're in this program. I know, guys, you had very little time. You know, you must be thinking what was the fun of doing this, you know. So this is a very, very common thing that happens these days. We call it speed dating. We do it through a lot of apps. I mean, a lot of people might not be acquainted with. But we just try to get this offer to you. The idea is to just know more beyond uh, what we already know about you. But this this is what, what we call as elevator pitch, right? You know, we... In minimum time, you have to talk maximum about you, right? We are going to send you back. Now you will have a different person, but you will have same time. And your but different room... questions. Yes, now those yes. questions. So, are... The questions are different now, and they're very hilarious, and definitely something you're going to like talking about. So the first question for the second prompt is going to the thing that drives you the most. So this is going to be the first question. And the second question is going to be a fruit that you resemble, most resemble to. Cool. We are sending you back and you can read from the chat box two things that you need to keep in mind while you are talking to a new person right now. We have some people on the way. Yeah, they're Maybe. going to have mm, good, healthy conversation. People are having long, healthy conversations, I guess. Yeah, but they have no. Maybe they are. Finding... Yeah, maybe they are finding it hard to, you know, like get to know which fruit they most resemble to. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Have meeting meeting have have a... This meeting yeah, is being. Yeah, I hope that you had a great conversation. At least I had. I had two different partners every time, and I love the way we interacted. And now I think you know which fruit you resemble to. It's going to be a key takeaway from uh, this meeting. So, um, yeah, I think this was the idea behind this was to, you know, uh, make you feel like, the same energy that everyone is feeling and to let you know that, you know, none of you, like, you're not strangers, you're not strangers. You have a common goal. You're here for one common uh, purpose. And you're definitely different from lots of people because you took a step, uh, you know, took a step you came, you like, you started to work on something that initially used to be a hobby or something. So now, you know, you share the same energy and you're going to share this platform for the next eight uh, weeks and so. So I hope this is the activity that you liked. And this was also a point to prove that this space can be your, you know, safe space where you can discuss and reflect on issues and on your experience. And we want you to utilize this platform where you can analyze, where you can share and enhance your knowledge and expertise and also share it with others. So that was the whole idea behind this brief, you know, uh, session. I hope you liked it. Um, I think without um, further ado, we are um, somehow running late on the like orientation timeline that we have. So I think um, we have, we'll, um, have Suhail sir over here, who will be introducing himself and the program. So here we have the the you know boss as uh, Anas uh, like uh, refers uh, Suhail sir as. So we have Suhail sir here. Um, I hope you're going to have like this session is going to be super energetic. So over to you, Suhail sir. All right. Uh, finally, I get 
get to speak. Um, I'm so, so excited and thrilled to see all of you here. And I see we have lots of curious people. We have an Avara here. We have a shining star. We got adventurous people. We got Jakas. We got a couple of tall people. We got smiling people. We got forest. A mix of so many amazing things. While Umar was playing that music in the beginning, I was thinking all along, oh my God, I hope I don't disappoint this wonderful group of photographers uh, and peeps. I'm going to try my best to give you whatever I have learned in 25 years. So I will just give it to you, right or wrong, you will have to accept it. Um, we are all going to work like everybody told you, we've been all going to work as a team. All I want from you is to keep a clean and open mind. There may be some people here who maybe know more than I do, which is absolutely perfect because I'm here to learn more than teach. So if you know stuff that I'm teaching, you just keep a clean mind because every time something is shown to you, you will learn something new. Like I said, I've been doing it for 25 years. I learn new every single day, especially from the people I'm teaching. So there are all some returning students, which is a great honor for me because they are coming back. Uh, they have taken classes from me. So I really thank you for that. And keep in mind, again, you're gonna see the same stuff probably. So don't feel bad because like I said, you will be learning new things um, even if you have seen it before. Um, I have a really good news for all of you, which is a bad photo does not exist, okay? You just simply cannot take a bad photograph. So don't ever be shy that, do I submit this image? Is it good enough? Will people make fun of me, you know? That is not gonna happen. We will never ever ever judge you or you as a person. We will just critique your photographs in a positive and respectful manner. That's the key, respect is the key. And um, other than that, just have fun, absolutely fun. You know, there is absolutely nothing else we're here to do. When you learn photography with passion and you work really hard, all those things that we all talked about so far, like empathy, you know, understanding other people, having respect for other people, they're gonna fall in line. Because I remember, um, which I'm gonna talk to you pretty soon, what photography has given me. I think that's when you will understand. What I'm gonna do now is, oh, before I move there, I would like to thank uh, Stairs for believing in me and thinking that I am the right person for this project. This is a great, great honor for me. So um, like I said, I, it's a lot of pressure on me and I hope I can at least deliver even if not 100%, but at least 50% of what they expect from me. So let me just go ahead and share my screen and then we'll go from there. Okay, so can you hear me, all of you? Am I completely clear? Good. Can, can you see my beautiful face? Is it beautiful? Is the background awesome? Good, that means video is good too. All right, so let me just go ahead and um, share my screen. So you can all see, um, the welcome screen, good. correct? Okay. All right. All right. So we are going to start with what is photography? And I, and I know that you know this, but just in case, photography is a language that allows you to tell a story, right? It's as simple as that. And that's exactly why we are in this particular class. We are here to convey whatever we see or whatever we capture to other people in a meaningful and powerful and effective manner, correct? So what is the process for that? The process is two-step process at least. One is seeing, that means you have a concept, you have a theme, you have a story, and then there is presentation. How do you convey what you have just seen or what is on your mind to the people? So it has to be in a very powerful and effective manner, right? That's what's what we call composition. 
You see something and you compose it. So we're gonna be learning both. The seeing part is also known as having an eye, correct? I would like to talk about a misconception here so that you are clear about it. Many people think that you have to be born with something, a talent or a, or a skill. I do not believe in that. I believe that everything and anything can be learned. All you need is hard work and you have to fall in love with that thing madly. I mean, when I say madly, I mean, people should call you crazy because when you take lots and lots of pictures and all you talk about is photo photography, you think photography, you walk photography, you talk photography, and then people will start calling you crazy. That's when you know that you are good at it, right? So that's kind of passion I'm talking about. So what has photography given me in other ways, what you should expect from photography? Let's talk about this particular quote. The camera is an instrument that teaches people how to see without a camera. That's Dorothy Lang. She was a photographer in 18 something, 1854, American photojournalist actually. Um, what does this mean? This means that if you are a passionate photographer, you will see more than most of the people see. And you will pay attention to details. You will read people's expression and you will have empathy for them or you will be happy for them. Um, because this is what photography does. It forces you to do that. When I'm walking with my friends um, or family who are not photographers, I would stop at something and I will start looking at it. And then they will say, what are you looking at? I say, this, did you see this really interesting thing? And they go, how did you see it? Because we were there too. It's not like I'm a superhuman being. It's just because I am passionately in love with photography and I pay attention to things. You will see a person walking and struggling with something, maybe has a heavy load or something. You will notice that if you're a photographer, you will notice that and you will go and run to help. So that's what empathy comes into play. That's what love for other people comes into play. So these are the things, some of the things that photography has given me is appreciation. I, I love and respect nature and human more. I have empathy, I have ability and opportunity to give back. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, I have made so many friends because of photography. I have earned quite a bit of money and I'm still making money from, from photography. Bonding is something that is most precious to me. My father, who is 87, started photography at the age of 82. And we never talked. I mean, it would be like maybe conversation for two minutes, three minutes. When he picked photography at age 82, those three years or four years that he has been there, now he's sick. The most bonding that we have ever done in our life because we had something in common and we both loved something um, so this is something you're going to get from photography too, okay? So moving on to our curriculum. This is just a brief, um, give me a second, overview of what we'll be learning. Let me just put it together. Hold on a second. We'll be talking about planning. How do we plan a good shot? And uh, in about five minutes, I'm going to we're going to walk through an illustration that will show you exactly that. Okay, we'll be talking about people photography. We will have probably two sessions uh, about that. We'll be talking talking about um, composition. We'll be talking about in composition. We'll be talking about uh, rule of thirds, leading lines, uh, framing. We'll be talking about um, foreground. We will talk about lighting. We will talk about, if we get time, macro photography. We will talk about some creative photos. Um, necessarily, maybe not necessarily storytelling photographs, but something that is fun to do, that you can do at your home. Um, especially these days when, due to COVID, you can't get out. You can do a lot of stuff from home. 
Okay. Now, here we go. What is a good photograph? It's like if you are looking for a precious stone out there and you don't know what it looks like, you're not going to be able to find it, correct? So if you don't know what a good photograph is, how are you going to take it? Um, so let's first talk about what exactly that means. A good photograph is one that has a vision, right? It has a theme, it has a story or idea or an issue. It doesn't have to be elaborate. I mean, it can be very simple thing, which we will, I will show you pretty soon what I mean by that. And number two, composition. That is where you have to be able to express that story, that idea in the most effective manner. That's what we're gonna, we're gonna break that down during these eight classes. And we're gonna learn those techniques one by one um, with um, assignments. And then that will probably be most effective for you too. Unique. This is a sort of a cherry on top. It's like, if your story is unique at the same time, something that people haven't seen before, they are going to be even more excited, correct? They're going to be more moved rather than something that they have seen before. So our job would be in this particular, um, there are some people still trying to join, uh, our job will be to convert or capture something in a very interesting manner or a different manner, even if it's something that people have already seen before. We will go through this exercise also, and you will understand what I mean by that. All right, let's go through an, through an illustration to understand what I mean by having a theme, having a story, having an idea and then capturing it. We're gonna do it in three steps, okay? So story and expression. Now, my story is, for this particular illustration is, that I have this musical instrument that's pretty unique and interesting, and I wanna show it to people. So that's my story. I wanna convey it to the viewer and let's see how we can do it. All right. So here is that musical instrument, the blue thing in the left corner. It's by the way known as ukulele. If you are musicians out there, you will probably know what it is. It is a little unique because it is made up of metal. They, these are normally made of wood. And it, the shape also is pretty interesting. Anyways, anyways, my story is that I want to show it to people. Okay, and this is how I photographed it. So we have lots of students here and I know it's going to take a lot of time if I ask everybody one by one. If you can, somebody can unmute and tell me, am I able to, in this particular photograph, was I able to express or tell my story properly? Or are there any issues? Anybody can just unmute and talk. Yes, I think, um, uh, Jivika, go ahead. Um, I think the first thing, of course, because of the color, I could see the guitar, the, the ukulele, but there's way too much to, you know, for, for me as an opinion. I can't hear you for some reason. I don't know why. Can other people hear her? So I'm saying she's audible. So all I'm saying is too much, too much stuff in the in the pictures. So focus on the on the instrument is a little difficult. Okay, so say it again. I'm sorry. I was. I think it was my problem on my my end. You said what? I'm sorry. I said too many objects right. in the in the frame, and right. therefore focusing on. This one okay. thing becomes difficult. Yeah. Per correct. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. That's true. All right. Here, here is one more question. What would be the story? Forget about this instrument. Is there any other story that actually didn't fail? It actually worked. This photograph worked for that story. What would that? What would be that story? You can raise your hand.
Yes. Anybody? It looks like everything else is uh, probably from kitchen mm -hmm. or a disorganized kitchen, and the, the only musical instrument is probably separates out itself. Right. Right. Good. So, if my story is the musical instrument, I probably failed in conveying that to people because when you look at it, you're going to say, "What is? What am I supposed to look at?" But if your story was, hey, look how messy my kitchen is, correct? Then I did a pretty good job. Um, you know, it is good exposure and there's a lot of stuff, you know, scattered all over the place. And that's not bad at all. Now, how do I change the composition of this particular image to make sure that my story is heard or seen properly, right? I know it's obvious is I can just simply pick it up and place it on a much cleaner or less noisy um, stage. But there are going to be um, times when you cannot move. This in this particular case, it is a, it's an object. It's also possible it's not an object or the story is just happening. You know, you can't, you don't have time to change things. So in, in that scenario, you probably would have to think of something else. You probably have to either move around or find a diff better angle. We'll talk about that too, but let's concentrate on this photo right now, this story right now. Okay, step, step number two, we just move it okay, to, All right, now, now people can actually see without any issues what I'm trying to tell them. I'm trying to show my interesting musical instrument to them. And they are now able to see it without any distractions, correct? Can anybody tell me how we can take it to the next level? You can raise your hand and tell me. If not, I'm going to just keep going. Anyways. Uh, we can, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so we can add some movement in this photograph. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, obviously, you have, you have taken my class. You straight up jumped. So what we're going to do, that's a good point. What we're going to do next is think. That's what I talked, told you about, about planning. Think about plan things out of time. What do we do with this instrument? We play it, correct? Wouldn't it make sense that if you really are trying to show it to somebody, why don't you just hand it over to someone who is actually playing it? Okay, so we move to step number three. All right, now we have the same story, but we added one more layer to it. In this particular case, we not only have our original instrument, which I wanted to show, but I have interaction. And we added one more layer to the story. Now we wanna add third layer to the story, maybe take it to even to higher level where you can actually hear the music. I mean, not literally, but you will feel like you're hearing the music, right? So that's what we call advanced, maybe probably advanced technique, because this is where we're going to slow down the shutter speed and we're gonna create a motion, okay? There we go. Now, my story is even more powerful than what it was from here. It was completely lost, like you, pointed out rightly that there was a lot of distraction going on. So I couldn't, people couldn't figure out what, what was going on. So we moved to step number two, and then we moved to step number three, and then we finally moved to step number four. 
this is an endless process. You can just keep adding and adding and adding. For example, you could add a music chart right at the bottom here, or you could add a music stand in the foreground and keep that in the foreground and keep the person playing the music in the background, or you could add audience behind her over here. So there are so many things you can do to make this story even more better. Okay. So based on the same concept, I just wanted to show you and compare the two photos here. This is similar to what I showed you, the kitchen shot, okay? But this one is successful. This actually works. And the kitchen shot didn't work. So I'm going to get out of here. I wanna show you both together. So let's, let's add both in a survey mode or compare mode. So as you can see, both have a lot going on, but this one actually works. Get out of there. All right. The reason this one works is because they're all similar things. It's all the same. They're all people. Number two, they're all on the same stage. But what is beauty about this photograph is that we don't have just one story going on. We have an overall story, which is some function, some get together is happening. But then within that one huge overall scene, we have multiple stories happening, correct? So we have like these three people here. There's one story, there's one more story here. There's one story here. And I'm gonna try to zoom more so that you guys can see. Let me just make it 300% zoom. Okay, now there's one story here. There's one story right here. Another story is happening right here. And then, but everything else comes together. <clears throat> okay. So clutter or having lots of things in the same shot is not always a bad thing. As long as you pay attention to your overall story and you compose it properly. So this is what we'll be working on all in, in, in our next seven classes is exactly to try to figure this out, how we're going to step-by-step step build on it. So by the way, let me ask you this question before I move on. Get out of the survey here. Come on, there we go. Okay, by the way, I mean, is there a one subject out of these subjects? Is there one subject that is more prominent? Can you tell me? Is there any subject that you think is more prominent than others? Yes, sir. Like the person is moving, the person who is moving inside the house mm -hmm. is like, is something is someone having a different and a unique story according to me and my perspective right i think right <clears throat> right i mean that's actually a good point i never noticed that but but i have to tell you there are three things normally in a photograph where people's eyes will go okay just remember this something that's very sharp or the most sharp something that is colorful four things actually, something that's colorful, something that's bright, something that is has a shape, is like mostly triangles or circles. They're always most powerful. When it comes to people's photo, you can now tell like the one wearing the red one is probably where your eyes will go first because of the color, because everybody else is wearing muted colors and she's wearing red and your eyes will go there. But in human photos, always remember when somebody is looking at your camera, 
that is the most powerful person in the shot. So if anybody out of these 12 people was looking at me, your eyes will go there first. That's pretty interesting. So I'm just giving you a background. That's how you would create a shot if you had a group of 10 people and you wanted to make one person very important. You would just tell them, hey, everybody else, look at each other and you, you look at my camera. You know, that's one of the techniques I use. Okay. Now next we're gonna do a really funny and interesting um, exercise. And this is about distractions, balance and aid. We just saw how the kitchen shot where there was so much distraction um, going on. How can we now use these distractions to, we can either balance it out, same photo, we're not changing anything, we're not changing much, or how can we use the distraction as our aid? We just help that distraction help us tell our story, which is pretty interesting actually, how do you do that? So I'm gonna tell you a story about it. Say for example, um, it's a female, you are a female and you are invited to a party. So you wanna go there, so you, you just bought a beautiful dress, you know, maybe a red dress and you wanna show it off. You wanna to go to party, you tell them, look, I got this awesome dress. So you are about to leave and you get a call from a friend who wants to come along. And this friend happens to be somebody really, really important. Let's say, let's say Shah Rukh Khan. Let's say Shah Rukh Khan is your friend and he wants to go with you. And you are excited to say, oh, of course I wanna take Shah Rukh with me. Who wouldn't? So you go to the party and what happens at the party? There is no way anybody is going to look at your dress or even you. It's going to be all about Shah Rukh Khan. So that's a distraction for you in that particular story. You just lost it. Now, how do we fix it? You want to take Shah Rukh with you, but at the same time, you want to show them your dress. So one of the ways you could do it is somehow, either you don't take him, but not that if you take him, you somehow blur him out, which is very hard to do. Because maybe you just put less light on him. I'm not sure how you're gonna do it. But the best way you can achieve the results of your story, of telling the story, which is dress in your case, is you have Shah Rukh do that for you. So he can, what he does is he takes you on a stage and he says, ladies and gentlemen, meet my wonderful friend, and look at her awesome dress. And that's how your story now came into being. All of a sudden, everything worked. This was distraction became an aid. And let's just, let, let me just show an illustration and I'll show you in photography wise, how we can do that. This was theory. Let's do photography wise, the same thing, okay? Okay. If you have any questions, I'm gonna pause the bit later and then you can ask me. All right. <clears throat> My subject in this particular case is this, this lady with the red dress. Remember, I took all precautions of making sure that people look at her. I made sure she's sharp. <laughs> she happens to be pretty. I made sure she's wearing a red dress because remember, color uh, is very attractive. And I kept her on the right spot where I wanted her to stay. And I made sure she poses in a shaped form. So it's a triangle. She's shaped in a triangle. And triangles are always pretty. Unfortunately, this famous guy on the right hand side is completely killing the shot because people's eyes will now start bouncing back and forth, back and forth. And she is sort of overshadowed by this person, right? By Obama. So the first method we can use which, let me just get out of here. And I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna ask you, what is the first thing we could do to, this is for somebody who hasn't taken my class before. Mm -hmm. What do you think we can do to make sure that people read my story, meaning they look at my subject? You can just raise your hand and I can move on. 
Anybody? I'm just going through you one by one. Okay, there's a hand up. Um, Mehak, go ahead. Yeah, so I think we can replace them, like put the girl on the front side and Barak on the back side. So our focus will obviously on the red girl because she will in the bold form there. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. How about Aish? Aish Jane. Yeah, so I think uh, we can uh, have Barak's hand pointing towards her. So, I mean, okay. yeah. pretty interesting. All right. Um, how about Amir? Muted, Amir. You're muted. Okay, good. Yeah. One with one was the this as she said, and also we can Barack Obama can just sit with her, like, or or he can just put her hand on her, like something like this. Okay, that's a good point. All right. So, uh, Suheb. So why don't we simply crop 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 him out of Obama? Okay. Yes, sir. Do you really want to crop Obama? Who gets a chance like that to take a picture of Obama? Okay, anyways, that's good. That's good. That's one of the things I just mentioned before. We could just drop Shah Rukh Khan. We don't take him, right? We could have done that too. But who would do that? If Shah Rukh calls me or Obama calls me, hey, I want to come with you, I would just jump at that. I'll just tell him. Why would we add him when, the, when our focus is on the girl? This so is why because do I add distraction on the photo. Good question. Because you could be somewhere where you have a distraction, you're taking a picture, you just cannot get rid of the distraction. You have to take a shot, right? You have, you have no choice. Like for example, you are outdoors, you find a subject, you wanna take a picture of it and you have a huge red um, fire hydrant next to it. You, you moved around, you try to figure out how to get rid of the fire hydrant, but you couldn't do that. You have no choice but to include the fire hydrant in the shot. So that's what I'm trying to teach you here. I'm trying to teach you that it's not always possible to get rid of um, you know, distractions like that. Bipin. Oh uh, yeah, maybe we can change the you know color of the dress of that lady. Mm -hmm. That give some contrast to the, you know, the flowers in the background and the dress. Okay. Yes, All right. So you're talking about post processing, mm. right? Um, I mean, anything. Oh, so we can. To... Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Who, who's next? Who was talking? No, I was just saying. Uh, can we just uh, maybe while uh, uh, clicking this picture, uh, is it possible to blur kind of you know that the way things are blurred at the background maybe? Blurring the guy would. Blurring, blurring and, Obama. And also the angle, also the angle, like there's more right. emphasis in the picture on Obama than on the lady, so yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, all these points were very valid. Actually, some of these points I had not thought about. That's exactly what I said in the beginning. I'm here, sometimes I learn new things. Um, one of the things, uh, okay. So let's just, let's just see what I think we could have done. And I could be, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm right, okay? Remember I said in the beginning, people's eyes go to something that's sharp, something that is bright, something that's colorful, right? So somebody did actually say blur. Yes, that's exactly what you can do. What you can do is, oops. is Blur Obama. Now we have him in the story. There is no way on earth your eyes are going to stop there. You just try your best to go and look at Obama because blur stuff, when I see a blur thing, they move away, okay? Now we did achieve, obviously you can easily do it on a DSLR where you can change your aperture and um, keep it really, the number, keep the aperture number really low and just open up the aperture. If you don't know this, come back some other class and I'll teach you that too. Basically, that's what you do. That's one of the things you can do is blur something that you don't want in the shot. 
So this is what you could do on a street when you have no other choice but to do that. You can't, and at the same time, you really don't want to crop him out because we do want that interesting story. You can say, hey, Obama was there, but by the way, I don't want you to concentrate on him. I want you to concentrate on my, my story, correct? So that's what we could have done. And then somebody said, like just, just like Shah Rukh Khan did, he presented the dress and told her, look at my lady. That's what exactly is gonna happen. Is that somehow we use him to tell our story? And then obviously when you look at him, you're gonna be forced to look at my subject. But that was sort of a, an illustration which probably is not practical, but it tells you exactly what I mean. But now I'm gonna show you a picture that actually did that. Okay. All right, so this picture was taken, oh my God, like six years ago in Kashmir. This is a place called Ahrabal. And this is a special image for me because now they don't let you get to that point where I took that picture from. Anyways, that wasn't the point. The point is what is happening in this particular shot? What is my subject? What's my story? Where is the distraction? And how did I manipulate, make sure that um, I'm using him, but at the same time, people are reading my story. So I won't ask too many questions here. I'm just gonna go ahead and explain. So. My subject, as I said, is the waterfall. And this person was there. He was taking pictures. I have a choice here. I could wait or I could ask him, could you please finish your photo and so that I can take a picture? I could have done that. But then that would be a photograph of Arabal just like any other photo that so many people have already taken. I didn't want to do that. I want Always in my nature photos, I always try my best to include people because I'm always focusing on telling stories rather than showing beautiful things. I do show beautiful things too, but whenever I get a chance, I will include something in the shot that tells a story, which you will see in my illustrations uh, in next seven classes. So the red guy with the jacket, red jacket, not only is he in red, he is a triangular shape. He is on the rule of thirds, the most powerful point in the picture. And he is our Shah Rukh Khan, he's our Obama. So look now what happens. First thing that you will see in the picture is him. And I wanna use him to tell my story. So as soon as you look at him, you wanna, you wanna know and you wanna figure out what is he taking picture of? that's when your eyes will go there. Okay, so this is called virtual leading line. We're gonna learn about leading line. This is known as a virtual leading line. This is where you use something to aid. <clears throat> Example would be if you're walking on a busy street and all of a sudden you stop and look up in the sky, what do you think other people who see you are gonna do? They are gonna look up in the sky because they wanna know what you're looking at. That's called the virtual leading line. Painters in 17th, 16th, 13th century knew, came to found that out. And if you see pictures of people, of painters in those times, you will see the main subject is settled, sitting in the middle and you will see people standing around them and they are looking at this main subject. So no matter who you look at, you're gonna end up at the main subject. So that's, that's where it came from. The virtual leading lines came from there. Everything came from those painters, by the way. So, <clears throat> yes. So we look at, we have to look at him. I want you to go there. And then from there, I want you to go to, to my main subject. So that's basically um, how you can use a distraction and you should include as much possible, as much as possible in a photograph so that you get layers of story. Because this is a story now. This is a famous place where there's a photographer, they normally go there to take pictures and I included all of them in the shot. So that's how 
that's how this whole thing works. Do you have any questions at this time before I move on to the last part of this? Because we are a little bit over 10.30 right now. Uh, uh, Deepak, raise hand. Deepak, please go ahead and say. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned the uh, rule of third. Uh, mm -hmm. I, what, what that rule is, I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, those rules I'm going to be teaching you one by one. Uh -oh. so that's, the, that's the first time, yeah. First, every, all the rules of composition will be taught every single class one by one. By the way, just, to, just for your curiosity, rule of thirds means you do not place your subject dead center. The most prominent subject, the one that's your story, is most of the times, the rule can be broken, is most of the times on like a tic-tac-toe, they're on each side of the story. They're either here or they're here. He's perfectly placed on the rule of thirds, meaning when you look at a frame, your eyes will go there. Stuff in the middle of the frame is normally considered as boring. That's why my waterfall is on this side of the frame, not here. Waterfall was here, it would fail. So it's on this side of the frame. That too is on rule of thirds. So we'll talk about rule of thirds um, next time. I'm gonna ask the moderator, how much time do I have? Do I, can I just go to the next? I have one more thing to show the unique photos and then we can wrap it up. Can I have five more minutes? Yes. Uh, I think Soheb raised hand. Go ahead, Soheb. So uh, my question is the very first photograph that you shared about that musical instrument. You said mm -hmm. that that was my that was a story you want to share. Right. So when that uh, photograph you shared that was in the kitchen the focus was not completely on the guitar. And so you removed the background completely and put it on the something that will be contrasting, that uh, only that guitar will be contrasting so that our complete focus will move on to the guitar. So likewise, the photograph you shared right now is of a herbal waterfall. When somebody will take a first visit to herbal, is he will, surely he, want, he will want his focus completely on the waterfall. Like uh, he will shoot it like, in the frozen water. So why would he include the rule of thirds like the person you included that 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 can uh, I can say that deviate the that can add a distraction point in the yes. photograph. Yes, exactly. That's exactly that's exactly what I was trying <clears throat> trying to explain to you is when you're taking pictures and you just want to show something that's really beautiful, you can do that. You're more than welcome to do that. But what I'm trying to build here is that your photograph has to be different. It has to have a story in it. It should be different from what most of the people would do. I took probably 100 shots of just the waterfall too. I'm not saying I didn't do that. But my goal was to take a picture that is not like other people's pictures. And at the same time, it does, add, it does tell more story than, what, than the waterfall itself. In this particular case, for example, I wanted to show that people actually come, they take, they love to take photographs of this place. And I wanted to then use that distraction to aid my photo. Did I take photographs without him also? Yes, I did. You don't necessarily have to include things in there. You may take 10 shots, but your goal should always be adding layers of story to your photo. If your goal is to show just the waterfall, you know, be my guest, go ahead and do that. Just take waterfall picture. But, but your goal should always be creating layers of story in a shot because that's what makes photograph more interesting. And I'm not saying that what you're saying is wrong. By the way, when I tried to sell these pictures, um, one of the persons came to me and said, I would have bought this if the person wasn't in the shot. They said, if the person was not in the shot, I would have bought it. Yes, that's true, but that's not what my concept was. I wasn't showing the waterfall. I was showing a story behind the waterfall. So yes, so we're gonna go through, we're gonna go through five or seven more, 10 more minutes of unique shots and then we're gonna wrap it up, okay? Remember I said in the beginning, a good photograph um, can have 
see I can get there. Unique and different in distinction. One thing you don't wanna do, especially when it comes to taking pictures of nature, is that shoot the place to death. You go wanna see Taj Mahal and you take the same boring picture that everybody does in front of the Taj Mahal, right symmetry, right in the middle of the frame. Why would anybody look at that photo when they have seen it before millions of times, right? So you wanna create a uniqueness in your shots. That's why I say, maybe you don't have to do it. This is what I do. I always and always try my best to include other things in the nature shots. So photography is subjective. You may not agree with me, but that's how I do it. But because my, my goal is also always telling a story. Now I said unique, let's actually look at some of the unique pictures and then explain to you what I mean by that. We're gonna start with, um, just give me one second. There we go. All right. All right, so we're gonna go through this real quick, but this is something really important. So this is what people would normally do. They see a beautiful photograph, they take a picture of it. Again, it's the same thing that I just mentioned about Taj Mahal. You just stand in front of it and take a picture and then people see it say, okay, seen before, nothing different. This is how I took it to just give it a little bit more fun and add a little bit more story to it with the sun in the background, okay? So we went from there to there. So I'm gonna go through these real quick. Here is a very famous monument. This is what I was saying, don't shoot places to death. So this is a monument in here in US, in Washington, DC. It's called uh, Jefferson Memorial. And this is what every tourist does. They take a picture like that. So I wanted to create a little bit more story, a little bit more depth and show more area. Um, so from here to here, okay? This is another building in New York City where you won't get space to take pictures of things. It's so congested, just like most of the cities in India. You have to get creative it, to make your photo look different. Okay, so I, <clears throat> I leaned against the building, I looked up, I got the reflection of two buildings in, in the side building and I created something from here. I got this, right? We're gonna talk about this in our classes in more detail, but I just wanted to give an idea what I mean by uniqueness. I'm gonna stop here, I'm gonna ask one question and then we're gonna move ahead. What do you think this photograph, what can we do to this photograph to make it more interesting and add more story to it. So let's just, let's just raise hands and tell me who wants to say something. Soheb. Uh, if there was some kind of a red car moving on the top. Okay, a car moving, okay. Um, good point. Contrasting car, red. Okay, Lakshmi. Uh, like we can have a person sitting on the road yeah so that will be an impactful photo for me like uh, i took one photo like this perfect yeah uh. exactly Akhtar. so uh, according to me if uh, someone crossing the road uh, kind of uh, like uh, like some children's or yeah. village people so it right. will be more interesting right right okay so look, you already are, okay, I think Vipin wants to say something. Vipin, go ahead. Yeah, or a wildlife, like some tiger wildlife. or somebody. Yes. Uh, Praptiba? Uh, I was just going to say the same thing as Vipin. Uh, some yeah. wildlife, some animal. Some, could... some animal, yeah. Okay. Akhtar wants to say something again. Akhtar Khan? No, 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 sorry. No, okay, sorry. no problem. 
No problem. Well, <clears throat> so you have already started thinking like what I wanted you to think like, this is perfect. So when you see something, you want to plan, you want to think, wait a second, how do I create and make this more fun? Because many majority of the people will take a picture. They see an S curve, which is very, very strong. They want to know, oh my goodness, this is a great shot. Let me take a picture. But to me, it's incomplete. So somebody said animal. I wish I was that lucky. So you got to get really lucky for that to happen. But it's very easy to tell your companion or wait for a car or a bike to there. So this and this. <clears throat> so I not only pl pl I placed a person in there, I just tilted the picture a little bit. I went down on my knees and I got a different perspective. Now we have a depth in the shot. We have a story in the shot. We have a mystery in the shot because we really want to know who she is or who he is. So this is all because how you think, you have to plan. You cannot snapshot. If you want to be good photographers, your picture has to be in your head before it gets into the camera. It's as simple as that. Now, here is a question that I always hear from, especially from new photographers. Sir, we don't have that much time that we will first put the you know, thing in our head because things are happening, right? Things are happening so fast. I can't get time management. I'm a, I'm a photojournalist. I can't just plan my shot. It will just happen. True. But remember I said about building an eye? Through the process, you're going to build an eye. The example I always give to people is sports people. Let's just talk about Sachin Tendulkar. Why was he so good at hitting the ball? But is he a superhuman? No. The reason he was so good, or people like him, is because they can see the ball a little bit before majority of the people can see it. And they can see the ball a little bigger than other people can see it. How did that happen? That obviously they may have something in them, but at the same time, they practice a lot. They're always thinking about their sport. They're always and always into this. So what happens, your mind keeps building slowly. And when you get um, situations where you don't have enough time, you always have an edge over other people. So. Um, another example would be, I was once asked to take pictures of dancers on a stage. First couple of sessions were horrible. I was getting a leg in the shot, half arm in the shot. It was driving me nuts. So with time, I learned the dance. It was a ballet dance. I learned the dance and I knew exactly the theme, what's going on. So I knew that when a dancer goes backwards, I know that they are going to jump. Just like uh, gymnastics. Whenever you see a gymnast jump, they first go backwards because they want to get to the room and the pace. So I learned. So I anticipated the shot. I knew where she was going to end up and I knew what was going to happen and I was ready. So same thing happens with whatever career you choose. If you're a photojournalist, with practice, you will know that when there is a riot, you will know where the cops are going to come from. You will know where um, what's going to happen when the stone throwing is happening, whatever is happening on the street. With practice, you're going to learn and you're going to be ready for the shot. Okay, so that's going to happen. So let's keep moving. So I'll ask you one more. Okay, this was the same audible shot and I showed you. Um, this is a very famous uh, religious place in Dargah in Kashmir. And I'm not saying this guy who took the picture was bad. And I just, I, I said that in the beginning, bad photo doesn't exist. So very beautiful shot, very nice shot, nice exposure, everything, but not unique, not unique. Why would anybody look at it when they have seen it before? So that was my take on it. Okay, it's the same place. Why did this happen? Because I thought about it, I planned it and I figured out a way to do it. And this is definitely something different. Okay, so from here, 
to here. So let's go one more. See, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. I think that's more than enough for you guys for today. My idea was this. The reason I showed you sort of maybe some part, some part of it was advanced. The reason I showed it to you was I wanted to lay down foundation of what is to come, what you should be looking for when you're taking pictures, what should what this whole course is about. Um, if you are here to learn just about photography, you are at the right, right place. If you are here to learn about how to become a better person, this is the right place. Because if you are a good photographer, you will be a better person. I guarantee you that because you will learn all those things that I told you in the beginning. You will start appreciating so much nature, humans, and everything else. So if you guys have any questions, there's a WhatsApp group. I will, I am not gonna promise that I will answer everybody's question because it's a lot of work for me, but I will try my best. So what we wanna do next is, um, your assignment, and then I'm not sure what else is gonna happen after this today, but basically what I want you to do, let me just open it, if Ipsa can help me out. What was the assignment again? To get a picture of uh, that, yeah? Yeah, so the, a group assignment that will be given to them tomorrow, that was one okay. of the assignments, so that they will get to know tomorrow. Okay. So we will update them on the group and they'll have to find one picture that is from their lives, basically. It can be to do with their home. It could be to do with their family. It could be to do with their work, anything from around them, one photo. Correct. So you're going you're gonna to send us one photograph about yourself, your family, whatever it is with the story, just one photograph. And then we will give you a group assignment uh, next time. You come, I think I think you will get that before. It just let's, let me just tell you what it is gonna be. What I think I will give you is exactly what I did with that musical instrument. So we will divide it into groups. We will ask you to pick a subject and then we will ask you to, to bring, to, to create a story in three or four photos, how you build it slowly. Okay, so photo, photograph like I showed, musical instrument was, in the kitchen, it wasn't making any sense. Then I took it separately. Then I held it in somebody's hand and I created motion, you know? So that's what you will be doing in a group setting. I think that's gonna be really fun. And I really want, I'm so excited to see what you will do, what you will pick. So um, do you have any questions, any concerns or anything at this point so that I will, I can improvise and maybe change things, nothing? Is everybody happy so far? Okay, good. All right. So then I think it's back to you guys. Um, Umar Saab, what, what is next? I think you're going to get, get some kind of feedback form. Is there anything else? Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much. I, I think uh, it is always a new way of learning whenever we attend sessions. So I have attended like so many sessions in the past. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm a better photographer than how, how I used to be in the past. Uh, but guys, I mean, uh, you know, we can see a lot of participation. You know, I'll share one funny instant that happened with me long back. So for a larger period of my life, I always thought that uh, everyone who speaks in English is an intelligent guy to a point when I met a lot of people who would talk in English, but were not that intelligent. But that was a lot, a journey of, uh, you know, self-exploration. I mean, it took in my life. Uh, so I was anchoring once in lovely professional university. It is in um, Punjab. I'm sure some of you might be knowing about it. Uh, then, the, you know, out of excitement in the middle of the show, uh, I asked everybody, you know, do you like the session? So partly a larger portion of audience was saying no. And portion of it was saying yes. Now it was a time like when it was kind of, uh, you know, putting everything down, the excitement down. So I kind of had to make up, uh, you know, uh, you know, to, to this response because I had done a huge blunder of asking when I already knew the performances are going, uh, you know, in a boring manner. So I said, uh, you know, I'm so happy that you are responding with yes or no. 
because at least I know that you all are involved, right? Uh, so, but uh, why am I saying this? Because in this whole cohort, uh, what I sensed was everybody was involved and involved to a level where, you know, I could see a lot of them getting curious to know what is what is happening next, right? When, when uh, slides were uh, shifting from one to another. Uh, having said that, I, I mean, we are all keen to know because we have concluded our first day uh, one by one, uh, taking 10, 15 seconds about your today's experience and your upcoming expectations. Uh, just, just one by one and tag each other. We can begin with uh, Ranjit, uh, the tallest guy. Uh, uh, just, just Ranjit, share you know your experience of today and what are your expectations and tag somebody after you are done. Yeah, uh, I guess uh, my uh, first I thoughts came in my into my mind that a photograph tells a story, and we have discussed lots of photographs and why a photograph becomes a good photo or a great photo. That's the thing, and yeah, having discussions in the future about photographs. That's my that's what I expect. Yes, yeah, so uh, thank you for this. Uh, it had been a like very good session, like not boring, but entertaining. And uh, I think uh, I would learn how to do photography where you can put smile on someone's face, not repeating the same uh, story everyone does. So I think it's going to be that kind of uh, project forward. Thank you. May I please somebody? Okay, I can see Vipin on my screen, so Vipin. Thank you, Mehak. And uh, yeah, it was so interesting to meet uh, such a diverse group from different backgrounds. And um, uh, the insights that Suhail sir gave regarding, you know, creating the layers of stories or maybe, you know, uh, the virtual leading lines. So all these things were very new to me personally and uh, very interesting to see you know just talking the theoretical part of it and then seeing it practically so that was very very interesting to me thank you so much i see ram on the screen ram bhai your turn and i say thank you to sir because um because of that i am able to meet all of you and new persons and for me that new things exploring is happy for me and uh, you know, from that session, I learned that there is a no, no bad photos or bad things because before I I used to think that if I click that one, it's not looking good and that is not telling stories. So now I can say that everything has a story. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so, so it was uh, basically a nice experience here. Yeah. Uh, uh, I had been a student of Sahil Sir uh, from past two years. So uh, in every se session, uh, we get to learn uh, new things, and uh, I hope in uh, in uh, coming sessions we will learn new things also. Thank you, Sahil sir. And uh, I will pass on to Ram. Uh, one second, please. Akhtar Khan. Uh, thank you for telling me. Uh, uh, so actually, I, I clicked so many pictures, but but uh, I never feel that uh, that uh, there is any stories that kind of thing. But uh, today, when uh, sir show us so many pictures, so I learned that thing. How can we make a story be, uh, in pictures? Like uh, I already saw uh, some pictures which front of camera uh, in like middle of the like uh, they are not uh, following leading line but uh, when sir so another angle of picture so it was very amazing for me so i learned that thing uh, and tomorrow i will also try that thing thank you uh, and uh, i want to listen uh, amir bia Thank you, Akhtar. Uh, I would like to thank you as well, sir. I really like the idea of uh, having person in nature's photography. So thank you, sir. I would like to tag
was Jeevika. Uh, I think Kafi Chiza was very interesting. Thi. I, I liked it. I liked the whole thing thoroughly. Uh, one thing, uh, one key takeaway I would talk about would be uh, using distractions for your for telling your stories. Like that's that has been one of my struggles in in, in general and then in photography also. Like uh, I would be you know planning this shot and then suddenly when I'm you know making the right angle and everything, and then someone would just walk in and you know it's all over, right? End of the love story. So. so now how do we you know work with that distraction so yeah uh, i would like to tag i think um, uh, prapti if you're not done prapti are you done no um no i mean just go um yeah uh, i think for me um i mean there's no one specific key i take away but i think i'll be able to i think look at my own pictures that are clicked in files so the new lens now uh i think that would be my take away i would love to go and experiment with the with the things that are clicked and with all the things that i'll be clicking now uh, yeah and i'm just looking forward to more sessions i'll tag um lakshmi yeah thank you prapti for tagging me uh like there are so many things in this particular session which i can take away but the most important thing i liked about is uniqueness and uh, i am remembering my old previously clicked photos uh like what kind of uniqueness i added on all those uh, photos so i am realizing all those things and this is kind of a journey in first session ki ha sab pata chal raha hai and i will tag uh, mr suraj um uh, hello uh, i honestly think to uh, i never imagined there would be so, uh, there would be so many interesting thinkings before taking one picture i mean i really enjoyed it and i really learned a lot uh, thank you sir and i i really hope to learn a lot in the upcoming sessions uh, i would like to tag uh, priyanka singh tomar um thank you so well sir for the very informative session and the main thing uh, i learned from the session was that as you told that no picture is a bad picture uh so and another thing that i love to take pictures more of nature so as you told that uh not only for the beauty you can take the pictures but also you can uh, show some story through the pictures so now i'll focus on this point more thank you sir priyanka you need to tag somebody okay um <laughs> who is left i don't know okay i'll see i'll go ahead then akka i think ayushi is being uh, there she is she is ready to help yeah you should please go ahead okay thank you uh sorry uh, for interrupting in the middle so i was uh, saying that i i i also thoroughly enjoyed the session um it was uh, as you were teaching like as uh, you were teaching so so it was very imaginative so i could imagine what was going on in my head while clicking a particular picture in the past so i could like so i just click to remember that i have gone to this place but now i also see myself uh, showing the story while while clicking that picture so I, i obviously i remember a story but can others see a story through my picture is something that i'll take away from the session thank you yeah i see uh, we have a lot of other yeah, people after uh, she was tagging so i'll go ahead with tagging after <clears throat> i think akhtar is uh, done all i already shared yes can can guys guys can you send hearts to ayushi so that she gets an idea who to tag next great no no i'm i'm just saying the one who not shared yet <clears throat> who have not shared yeah 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 who have not shared yet can you send the hearts to ayushi oh this suhe right 
Yeah, Suheb. Yeah, I'll tell you. It was an interesting session, and I can see there's a lot to know especially about these rules and stuff. And something other, uh, um, I believe this is much more to learn, and mostly these how to add layers to the photographs. So I'm tagging who has who has has actually written in the chat box. So as is saying that this session was really uh, an amazing experience for me. Being student of Sirsa since last two years, I love how he teaches the same topic always with new energy and new experiences. Thank you so much. Your art of teaching is like a diverse photograph that has lot of perspectives for the same subject. Uh, so we have Mehrub also. I like the whole thing. Mehrub, you can unmute yourself and share on the audio. I I like. Uh, this this whole uh, time with you guys, uh, but one thing that we are going to have offline, we actually have forgotten it um, because of how digital space has taken space of our life. Uh, just I mean, whatever you wrote today, the learnings and and you know the thoughts that you have, uh, you know, to process in coming days. Uh, take a pen and a paper, write it down, maybe till tomorrow or day after tomorrow, and share it in the. chat box i mean the whatsapp group that we have and also we are going to focus on grouping and bonding in this week where you know as well as i've mentioned that we are going to have uh, group activities together where you are going to uh, uh, you know work in groups uh, the whole idea is to like uh, work on a picture as a team and you know tell a story when you are working on something together right uh so we'll definitely share a mail and you'll have a detailed uh, description of what you need, are going to do in next time we are really sorry we have exceeded our session but i think uh, at least we have not bored you but yes at the same time we would want you to be uh, more expressive and also i think that will happen eventually i think in the next week we'll see a lot of expressions coming from other people who have not spoken today uh, and also if you have any questions like post to this session uh, once once we are done throughout the week we are available over call over text and use use this space you know as 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 you want it this is going to be a safe space for all of us we are going to use it wisely we are going to bond together because the the biggest learning that you uh take from a cohort which is diverse and inclusive is uh, is the learning from the diversity itself right some people coming from south some from north you know this is this is the bridge of you know, that we create through the thread that we call thoughts so that exchange has to continue and i think over the course of time not just about the photography but you will learn about life a lot you will explore yourself and the competencies that you have not thought about but at the same time this is a collective thing it is not just helps of doing or us doing it is we doing it so we are all in it together and that has to be kept in mind right if something is not coming clear to you maybe things are missing from your end maybe maybe you have you know uh, dropped off at any point of time with your thoughts or you know kind of not connected at any point of time so just keep in mind that all the learnings that you are going to take from upcoming workshops would be all because of your own participatory approach so if you are not participating your learnings will be you know mitigated and and if you are participating trust me you you will learn more than what what everybody else will be learning so but at the same time know each other connect to each other after this session try to talk to each other you know whoever you want to connect them you know as of now eventually you will know each each one of you but connect with each other just get on a call you know you know chat with each other of course you will have your groups but in coming time we would want you to you know talk to each other as well you know uh, you know as as the week passes by for now thank you so much uh, for for giving us this opportunity to be part of this wonderful cohort it has been a lot of effort as i said in the beginning i have not worked this hard for shortlisting uh, the candidates the reason was we had amazing amazing applications from different places but you know at this point of time what we decided uh, to have two cohorts we'll have winter cohort and then we'll have summer cohort as well the reason was because we were trying to justify the applications that we had so we can't have you know beyond 25 in one cohort So any questions for now to us uh, or to Shail Sir, uh, please please drop a text in the chat box. We are all in the group. Anywhere you feel reaching out to Shail Sir for us, but just drop a text. We can set up a call. Uh, thank you so much uh, for bearing 
विद अस एंड आई नो लाइक यू आर रनिंग लेट एंड आपका सब का आई थिंक यू नो ऑल योर डिनर्स गॉट डिले बट यस टूडे डिनर वुड बी अ टेस्टी और वन बिकॉज यू हैव अकम्पलिश वन डे ऑफ योर योर प्रोग्राम एंड इट हैज़ बीन अ प्रोडक्ट टू डे एट लीस्ट फॉर अस एंड आई एम श्योर एट लीस्ट फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू एंड वी विल मेक मोर प्रोडक्ट टू डेज टूगेदर थैंक यू सो मच एंड एंड please connect to each other once we are off throughout the week wherever you feel thank you so much take care and good night